it's morning here, it's really uh, hot here, and also hot, the, the sensation to talk in this Reimagine Education 22. So I welcome all of you. In this session, we will discuss two important things that are mindfulness, very important nowadays, and also enchantment, because we need both. We can live without, without enchantment. First of all, I think we need to clarify some confusion about mindfulness, that is one thing, when you have a lot of things in your mind and it's confusing and uh, mindless, there is something we will not discuss today. And in the middle of all of this, the mindfulness, the so relevant, so important mindfulness. So our path will go to the mindfulness way. Wow. Today we are living a lot of things. It's a chaos. We have a lot of information. We have war, we have pandemic. We have um, a lot of information. And I think the key, the key problem is the amount of information we need to deal every day. A lot of information from all, all, the, all the sides, from our cell phones, from television, from people in the work everything and this confuses us and we, when we think about education and when we think of reimagining process we need to organize this chaotic external world so our our journey starts thinking on our own world what about each one of you dealing with all this information and we need focus we need focus and also we need enchantment because Without the enchantment, without the magic, and I like to, to show my magic bone, and without enchantment, there is no, um, there is no, how can I say, it's not happy, the right word, something uh, grace, there is no gift in our day, then if there is no gift, there is no, um, this sense of um, living in a, reciprocity interconnection world education loses its main meaning so it's the image i would like to to think and we will do some window exercises maybe there are also wisdom exercises because we will train our minds and also do some practical exercises from Qigong and Tai Chi Chuan from Chinese origin to reflect the way we are organizing and prioritizing information nowadays. Are you ready? I wish you are. If you're not, please show me your hands and I will go some steps. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. It's so great. So let's first of all, first of all, hi John. <laughs> I didn't. John, Emma, Anna, Andrea, Irmin, Tim, Claire. Thank you to be here, Harry. Harry, Harry. <laughs> so very happy to have all of you here. And let's think about all the windows we have open in our minds. Uh, just for an additional information, presenting myself here with the window, I'm Marina Petivanis, I'm a writer. I have a lot of books, more than 20 books from children's literature, poetry, and also business books. I'm launching a book on the next days, and I have the, I'm proud to have Manishi, Jain, our Manish, uh, in, the, in the front of the book. And we are speaking about um, how can we um, make the, in this complex world, the systemic management way to organize information. So uh, it's my study. And I am also an expert in exchange relationship 
management and also gift economy. I have a book of, on gift economy and I'm a university professor. I have my own company. The name is Umbigo do Mundo, Naval of the World, Umbigo del Mundo. And all this methodology is part of our process for educators and this company I have from the last 23 years old and from the last two years I create a platform for education thinking on kindness and generosity for schools and families. So that's my background and when I think about open windows in my mind like open files if if my mind or uh, was a, um, a screen a screen of a computer all of these things are opened. So think about all the screens you have now opened in your mind. You can share your own profile, but we also have our problems, our nightmares, our dreams, bills to pay, things to be sold, things to deliver, family, work, um, the pandemic, um, sometimes we are afraid, sometimes we are happy. Everything interferes in the, in the main processor of our minds. How many windows do, do you have now opened in your mind? One minute to think. And as I, I shared with you, my profile during this process, I'm also implementing in myself because I think, my God, how many things at the same time, thinking together in the, I'm, I'm also a, a mother. I have two, two kids, grown up, 24 and 20, but they are always kids for us. I have my husband, I have my, my parents, my relatives, all of this information at the same time blowing in our minds. You can also, a good idea is to write, write down all the windows. I did this. So for me, it's a, it's a chaos. We have an external world in a chaos situation. It's not now. I think we, it's something historically that repeats. And we have our minds with a lot of information working together. Now, the second step is dun, dun. <laughs> the, um, let me check here. Now the exercise is trying to close all the windows in your mind. Wow. Practice some body exercise, but this exercise is really hard. It's really hard. We need to, to prioritize what windows or files I can close. Um, some of them I need to minimize because I can close definitely. I, I, I need to keep watching. The, the, I have some, some questions that are not solved, so they must be open in my mind. And what information I can send to the cloud? Okay, go to the cloud and be there. I don't need to, to keep, I know you, I have this information, but I don't need to keep watching this information every time. Zero, it's a very, very tough and hard um, process, how to prioritize, how to organize information, and how to have things that are really important now, because everything is important, for sure, we have a lot of important things, but if we have information running together at the same time, my body, um, maybe our, our mind processor it can explode even if we have a very powerful mind and our uh, connections need to have this um, the, the power of um, working in this way sometimes we need to calm down so this this exercise of prioritize is something that we we must do 
day, every morning, how many windows I have open in my mind and how can I close some windows or how can I minimize some windows? How can I send some information to the cloud to keep my mind calm, okay? So let's continue. Thinking on the windows, how many windows are now open? How many windows are now closed? And the importance of each window. It's not an exercise that you will finish today. It's something to start practicing from now. Windows, windows open. And what I will do with all these windows, because even thinking on this building with a lot of windows, we can not be in all the windows at the same time. It's impossible. Okay, we can run and go to a window and then to the other, but how can we focus on things that are really important at that moment? And it's not something the other things are not important at all, but for now, what is important? And it's, it's really um, clarifying, it's a really credible, clarify information to know that the most important window is mind, heart, and soul. And sometimes we keep watching the window of the television news, the window of um, the, a lot of external, external um, stimulus or this stimulus package, external stimulus package that influences the way we live. So to go to the this path of the mindfulness, it's important to keep this alignment, mind, heart, and soul. So I invite you to open your wisdom now. Your wisdom. We close a lot of windows. We, we check the windows. We close some, we minimize others. And now we will open our wisdom. And which window? we can see when we open our wisdom to our body, to our mind, to our soul, to our hearts. Again, it's a daily exercise because there are some days that I can organize my information, my, all my data and, and check that this earth, this beautiful sky with the moon is the window I'm, I'm Visualize, visualizing at this moment. So try to keep this in mind and think about your worlds and your words. There is a sociologist here in Brazil, his name is Paulo Freire, and he, he studies these. Our words represent our worlds. So when you think about reimagine education, it's it's really, really interesting to think about things we are spreading, words we are saying. And when we don't have this prioritization of information, maybe we can be aggressive to someone. Maybe we can send, a, instead of a good word that can change the day of someone, we can send a, a bad word because of our mind confusion, of our mindfulness. So this, this word represents our own world. And this state of being attentive and being aware of what is taking place in the present without thinking about the past and the future, because this is our minds, this confusion, everything, everything together. A lot of information at the same moment working together, together and Let's think on the present and try the concentration. What is the concentration? I brought my magnifying glass. So it's something that amplifies the way we can see everything. It's not to concentrate in the small part. It's to concentrate in something and amplify, look into the deeper layers of our minds. I love a quote from Nietzsche and he says, when we find this deep side of everything, maybe we can find something very, very important that we even thought about when we start 
trying to find things. So um, thinking on mindfulness is thinking on magnifying information and magnifying things. And, and this mindfulness directs what the magnifying glass is just looking. That's the, the key point. We have a lot of studies, scientific studies, hypotheses, a lot of information about mindfulness. But is the state? I think sometimes for myself, I think about um, a meditation, a, a very high level of concentration in something that can help me to find answers. So I have a, a, a task, I have a challenge, and I need to find solutions. And with mindfulness, I bring my magnifying glass and I have a deep contact and I can close the other windows, windows of external information, the windows of, um, of all the problems, the windows of the future and the windows of the past to be concentrated in something I need to, to solve at that moment. So the, to be in the present is point to achieve the mindfulness and we have this mindful approach what is the mindful approach one way to achieve the mindful approach is breathing some of you were with me in the first session and experienced these so breathing is a key point my God, I can't control my mind, a lot of information. I can stay calm. I can organize and prioritize information. A lot of things coming. It's good to have the flow, but to think and to reimagine, to know something and to recognize, you need to calm down. Breathing is a very, very easy way. You don't need to, to spend money, nothing. It's with you. Control your breathing. I will bring you some exercise from Chi Kung and from Tai Chi Chuan. I practice Tai Chi Chuan. I'm far away from being a master or something like this, but I love to practice and I love to, to it's not teach, it's to show uh, some tips that help, help me and uh, that helps me every day and maybe they can also help you. And Qi Kung and Tai Chi Chuan, there are a lot of studies that they are connected with mindfulness. So mindfulness and Tai Chi, because you need to concentrate, you have a lot of things to, to be concentrated. And your breathing, the positioning of your hands, and the way, uh, the position of your eyes, the position of your body, uh, of your, the whole body, your head, the way you will move if it's an, like an uh, expire of it, something more, um, it, if it's soft or if it's hard, the rhythm, everything together helps you to concentrate like the magnifying glasses in the present. If you keep thinking different things, you can do the exercise. So it's the key point of of Tai Chi Chuan and, and also Qigong, the Qigong exercise. They are also connected to self-compassion and they are very, very good for the health. We will align body, breath and mind and I will share with you some movements and if you can practice, it's great. If you just want to keep watching and try in, in a different moment, okay, no problem at all. It's not a complete class, but three special movements that can help you to find the mindfulness. The first one is a very, very, very easy one, but it's very, very powerful. The name is Small Universe Circulation, and I will share with you. Music. Stand up and down. And this exercise is just 
breath in and breathe out. Lower and breathe in and breathe out. Marina, Marina, yeah. uh, Marina, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, so the screen is too small for people to see right now because you are sharing. So uh, can you, I'm so sorry, but can you stop sharing and then uh, we can continue? That way your screen is big enough for everyone to see. Sure. Without. Within. And without. Just checking here to be align your eyes to the horizon. And it's like the, the breathing is moving your hand. So it's really important to concentrate the breathing. Breathe all the air you can. You can hold, count from three, one, two, three, and then. It's a good exercise early in the morning or in different moments of your day. You are tired, you are, you are working hours on the computer and then you stand up and just do this. It's, how can I say, it's magical because you reorganize the energy of your body and you need to think about there is something in, in the Chinese medicine, the name is Qi. There is an energy that organizes all your body and the chi is in this region. So try to think while you're breathing, breathing and without thinking about the energy in this region. You can think in different ways, like some, some people think of something sparkling or something um, with light, something that is uh, meaningful for you to represent the energy. And the way this energy will circulate all over your body. And then we can, um, it's a concentration of information here. And then we can take the high concentration, my concentration, and flow this energy all over the body. An easy movement. You don't need to hurry. Okay, I have no time. I just have two minutes. Okay, if you can do two breaths, it's excellent, like this.
you can breathe in and breathe out with your nose. And if, if you have any difficulty, you can also use your mouth. Breathe in and breathe out. But the best way is breathe in and breathe out with your nose. And one tip is to keep your tongue here in your superior tip. And the sensation of whole movement will be better. So after this exercise, we go to the next exercise, and then I will share the image with you later. The name is separating earth and heaven. Okay, we finished this one, and now we will go to the second one with this chi kung chi kung um, inspiration, and we will separate and. Do this um, continuous movement, separating earth and heaven. And then we go toward to the hand that is on the top. We come back and we change hands. Okay. Keep breathing. Calm movement. Concentrate on your breathing. Think of the energy flowing through your body. Continuous movement. Try to stretch. And concentrate your eyes on the horizon. The way you can calm your eyes is something that represents the way you are calming your mind. Keep breathing. Breathing. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. If you have flexibility, use your flexibility. You don't have, you don't need to stretch your body too much. Breathing. Without. Concentrate on breathing. The secret is to try to find the flow, the rhythm, to practice this exercise with, with the flow. So, okay, we're finished again. Make your hands. Now we do something different. In our heads. And also our ears. We have a lot of special points connected to our bodies. So when you have a problem, when you are with your mind confused, 
try to do this. It hurts, but it's really good, the sensation after, after. Okay, and now our third exercise, the name is Cloud, Cloud Hands. And it's like you are carrying some studies and theories. They say you are, uh, you are carrying a cloud, but don't think about comp computing clouds because it will confuse your mind. You can also think about your world, the world you want to carry, you want to, to put from one side to the other, you want to take care. So this position, and all of the um, things we learned this morning together. Think about breathing, think about um, your shoulders, light shoulders. Think about your breathing, carrying the movement. And it's like you have this word here, like a, a bow. And then you do this movement from the right to the left. And then you change the position and you go to the other hand, to the other side, and turn. It's not a movement with your hands, it's a movement with this region and with your breathing. Some years of, of uh, trying and then you, you see, you don't know anything about this because it's really hard to, to make it in the perfect way, but it's important to keep trying. That's the, the um, most important part of, of training, like martial arts. So keep breathing and transferring your weight from one side to the other. Don't forget to breathe. If it's getting hot, it's normal. Your eyes, calm eyes, horizon eyes. Breathing with out. I think now you can understand why people forget all, all of their problems practicing exercise like this because you have a lot of things to be concentrated in the present. Because if you're not Brief, uh, breathing properly, if you're not making this transference of your weight, if you're not staring your eyes on the right position, if you're not on the right um, alignment, um, you, you can do the exercise. So it's a metaphor of the way we want to organize our minds when we want to achieve the mindfulness. And to reimagine education is something like this, because we have a lot of external information, a lot of old uh, rituals, old um, habits that we need to, to rethink. It's not to change, we need to rethink. And to rethink, we need to prioritize. And to prioritize, we need to organize. And when we practice exercise like this, it's like cleaning our clarifying our, our minds to check what are you doing in a strange way and what we can do in a way to, to transform people and to transform society. So you can bring your hands together again. And now it's really good because it's your energy and your power applied to yourself. And now you can hear your face in your eyes. Ooh. 
move. And now just relax some coming down. And I wish you're fine. You can also stay um, in this position, taking chi and just breathe. Sometimes we just need to breathe to see things uh, more. And we think we need to run more. We think we need to do more things. We just need to stop, stop and concentrate. So this, this part, um, I'm thinking as English is not my first language, sometimes I'm, I'm glued to some words and I think the day, the, the word, of, today's word is so. And I also like to create new words in Portuguese. And excuse me for my creative English, I create some new words the same way I do in Portuguese. So if you don't understand, please always ask me. Now, I, I wish you are feeling well. I wish this exercise um, helped you to organize your bodies because now we will talk about our minds. And after cloud hands, my recommendation is try to practice every day. They're, they're easy and not complex, but uh, easy is so so because they have, uh, you can upgrade the levels of practicing this exercise. I recommend you can, you can find easily all of these exercises on YouTube. There are must practicing. I'm not a master, I'm just a very, very dedicated student, but with the, the key um, advice of the masters, you can keep practicing. And it's important to have some routines and some rituals when we think how we can uh, reimagine process that we are very, very used to repeat. We repeat, repeat, repeat. How can we transform these, these routines and these rituals? And I will present you now a systematic way we developed here uh, um, in this process of organizing and creating methodologies that can help people to implement this, this process in a, more, um, in a more easy way. So the enlightenment uh, matrix for education can help leaders and teams in defining priorities and goals. And this becomes a guiding star to guide your projects. I can talk about leaders and teams, and I also can talk about educators. How can we prioritize our goals? And how can I have a, a guiding star that can help me in that moment that I don't know? Wow, I need to imagine and then to reimagine um, which way I, I will follow. I don't know. So the guiding star have some important steps that can help you like first first one map and let's think about mapping our minds finding the the windows we had opened 100 windows thinking at everything together so we need to map the situation and in this moment we need attention and we need detailing because there are a lot of things that if if you don't put our attention we will not find. So first mission, map. Second mission, we need to organize the same way we practice with our minds, which information I will minimize, which information I will put in the cloud, which information I will delete, I will reorganize, I will um, put in the um, very important um, material. So we will evaluate and prioritize. It's really important. 
then we will go to planning because there are a lot of people that without mapping and without organizing go straight to planning and then you plan what if you don't have the map and we have now a very complex context uh, with a lot of things happening together but you can say marina in um, um a thousand years ago things uh, are things were different no the complex world is the same but we have a lot of information now that uh, to deal with and 100 years ago a thousand years ago we didn't have all this information and it's easier to deal with less information and when we have a lot of things happening together we need to focus that's why having a guiding star can help you thinking about how we can reimagine reimagine education if we don't map if you go just planning and if you go just through communication and execution i will implement something that i didn't map that i didn't organize and then we implement and also we know people that i will try to implement it's not um it's not i'm not finishing the idea of having an experiment or a trial or checking hypotheses you can do all of these but the important thing is to organize because when you have everything organized you can recheck you can map the learnings you can you can compare your achievements going through one way through one path the the mainstream and the many streamings you can map now and at this time it's really important to have the enthusiasm i love this word and i think that a lot of um, entrepreneurs that show us that that we have enthusiasm and professionalism you can go far and far away if you have everything programmed and no enthusiasm my god <laughs> maybe your creative idea or your special solution can go ahead the say on the same way and then the very important part that that is to um enlighten but it's not an awful enlightenment okay oh my god the enlightenment wow voila it's an enlightenment that you can measure and you can organize and you can make this evaluation thinking on maintenance and this guide star is something that we we'll repeat and repeat and repeat is not something that i implement one time and then okay finished i conclude my my process is something that you keep implementing and you keep implementing after finishing this um phases of enlight you go again and you map and you organize you plan you implement and enlight and map again and organize It's the same way like again um thinking about the exercise we just practice from tai chi chuan and chi kung the same way it's not one time okay is this morning but when i practice every day i can look inside myself i can open my internal window and check the way I, i'm breathing the way i'm making my movements if i'm too fast if i'm too slow if i have no patience so i i want to focus but i don't have any patience even to practice my exercise because i have all the windows open in my mind so this map is simple it's easy to to follow and it's something that you need to have like a guide star every day you go there and map organize plan implement and light again map organize plan implement and light special tips for you before our conversation so be aware we are talking about try to find awareness but when we are aware that to be aware is the first point to achieve the um, 
uh, the mindfulness. And also you need to be open. There, there are people that, that are closed. They're not open to new situation. They are not open to transformation. They are, no, they are not open to reimagine. They are closed. So you need to be open. You also, oops, you also need to be determined because, okay, I'm aware, I'm open, but I don't want to do anything. I'm not determined to, to make the transformation. I love the world, um, like the, the competences. We have the technical competences when we think education. We have the um, social, emotional competences. And I love the social transformational competences. And to have these, to implement these social emotional and also social transformational competences, thinking and education, you need to be determined. And to conclude, you need to be ready to experiment because there are a lot of people that don't try. So try the same way you tried organizing the information in your mind map, closing windows and organizing files and sending some to the cloud and deleting some and minimizing others. And you experiment a body exercise, feeling your body. My God, I'm really, I need to relax here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm strong, I'm hard. I need to make my, my body more calm and make my body more comfortable. You need to experiment. So this session is about this. Experiment organizing your mind, experiment organizing your, your body, checking your alignment, checking the way you are staring at, at the things or looking on different situations. And try to create ecosystems of unusual connections. Sometimes we repeat the same things we are used to do. Um, okay, I tried this, I will repeat. It's quite different than repeating the system of the guide star that can guide you to an organized and more mindful process, thinking on reimagine everything and reimagine education, but try to find different ways like the mainstream and the many streamings. And when you have everything, it's not planned like determined situations, but when you plan to map, when you plan to learn, the most important learning is the learning of yourself. There is a quote here from a, a Brazilian writer, Guimarães Rosa, and he says, the best moment uh, to, to teach or to learn or to educate is when you find your own enlightenment. I think it's the best part. So you are going to teach or to educate or to, to show ways to inspire your students, your, your, your people, your, your connections, and then you, you got inspired. You learn this. It's the key point. And for me, these unusual connections with myself also, these connections are really, really relevant, are really, really uh, important. And to finish, we will have more 10 minutes to discuss. I want to hear your, your sensations, your feelings, and your doubts. May the enchantment be always with you on reimagine education because it's really important. We have the path, we, we have techniques to organize our mind, minds, our bodies. But um, if, you, if we don't have the enthusiasm, I think the enthusiasm is the light that can change everything, even in the most complex or complicated or difficult situation. It's something that you as a reimaginer of education, I can can offer words, smiles, and enlightenment. Thank you a lot, and 
I'm here to, to talk with you. And my presentation is finished here. I will stop sharing. And I want to, to hear you, your sensations, the way you are you're feeling now, if you have any any doubts and how can I how can I help you? If you like the exercise, if you want some special tips, now I'm yours. Thank you a lot. Let me check the chat. Okay, I feel good. Irmi, thanks, Marina. Those exercises were really powerful. Claire, thank you. They're really useful. I can really see my views on this myself with others. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so I'm here. John, Andrea, Emma, Anna, Bradley, Sylvia, Devika, Temo. Ansa asked me, what is mindfulness meditation? Good question. And Ansa, all this process, they are connected to the, the mindfulness meditation because we clarify our minds and focus like using our magnifying glasses. We focus in something, so you have a challenge, you have a situation that you want to solve. You can concentrate your energy and think on one thing, think on one challenge. This is the mindfulness meditation. There are a lot of different um, families of um, practice, but the main idea is this. Thank you, Emma. The guiding star is an interesting concept that I will try. Please try and keep in contact. And I can share my my mail, my information. I will share with you now. And uh, if you have any doubts, I don't know if you printed the screen, but it's really good to to keep implementing, and you see the difference. That's what the name is guiding star to guide and to bring bring right to our our lives any other question curiosities or i will share with you my email and then if you need any additional information you can contact me about this book i i told you that we have manish in the front page of the book that is here my contact feel free to to ask feel free to write and i'm here Curious about you. I would like to, to check with you if you have um, any um, any situation, any how can I say real problem, real challenge that I can help you discussing. We can help you talking together. Emma, I'm writing my thesis at the moment, so I will also try to build the chikung into my morning practice to focus. Great, Emma. And Ermi, what is really great is when we have exercise and practice that work almost immediately before the mind gets too loud and frenzied. This exercise really do that. Great, Ermi. John, will, I will practice that. Great. Brady, thank you so much for this presentation filled with gems. Great. Oh, thank you. Anna, thank you. Let's maintain our tea during the day. Great. So the first step, 
we did this morning, keep trying, keep acting, and keep organizing the files of your mind. Thank you, Emma. Thank you again, and goodbye. <laughs> I'll be here. We have some minutes. Bradley, I have challenged around teaching these innovative practices in education settings where team members are very close and maybe skeptical about these types of practice. Very good question, uh, Brandy. Uh, one thing you can do, that's why we develop methodologies because when we have the guide star, people love to believe in some references or in some methodologies there are, there are how can i say something like the the market said it's okay because it's a methodology it's a tested methodology so i will believe it's something about beliefs believing in something and try to use the guide star because guide star can unite people with a, uh, with a, the same goal and different teams can work together, mapping and organizing and planning and implementing and enlightening or enchanting and then reviewing everything. So you have something to check, to compare, and you can include like breathing and everything with uh, everything together. It's not something separate. And in my experience, a lot of um, implementations doesn't succeed because people try to do it separately okay today is yoga day and then you to do yoga day without thinking on the other connections and this it's great but it can be disconnected when you integrate everything it's easier to um, to bring people together when you when you make people get in contact with this complex interconnection of everything, it's easier than trying to, sometimes people think ah, it's alternative methods. I, I don't like this. Um, I don't need to, to ex experience this. I don't like, but when it's everything connected, you have more arguments to bring people together and to help people to be together with their own minds, hearts, and bodies, and souls. I wish I could help you with this, with this answer, because it's hard. And I work a lot in the educational um, system and also in the corporate system. And there are, there are some magical formulas that, that people that people love and follow. So having methodology can help, can help because people believe more in a methodology than sometimes in sayings, even if all these sayings are wise, special wise sayings, they believe more in a methodology. So let's put everything together, create wise information to these methodologies that can help people. So we have one more minute. Yes, using the methodology will help people trust the practice. Yes, <laughs> rather than isolating them. Challenging ideas is good for our health. Great, and uh, Irving, I see Bradley's point. Some of us are in contest that we have some fixed mindsets. Yeah, fixed mindsets. And it can be hard to bring people along with new different ways of doing and being. Yeah, discomfort. Methodology can be a good career to introduce innovative practice. So thank you all. I think we have just one minute. Um, thank you all. For me, it was a great, a great moment, a great session. And I wish the great session um, can have uh, uh, the same feeling can also inspire you and, and be with you. I'm really happy to be here this morning with you. And I hope to see you soon.